talk about the mechanism of action of buffers and how you prepare buffers. So buffer solutions are basically solutions which, which resist a change in their pH and uh, these buffers are basically a requirement of uh, laboratories dealing with wet work because biological samples, your cells, tissues, enzymes and all biological reactions, they have an optimum pH value to perform their functions. So that's why we need to have a specific pH solution so that our enzymes or biological reactions can occur to the best of uh, values. So these buffers are basically uh, a mixture of acid, a weak acid and its conjugate salt or a weak base and its conjugate salt again. Why weak acid and weak base? Because all the biological reactions, they require a pH between generally between 3 to 10. And there are only weak acid or weak base which can perform function as a buffer between this range. So how, how these buffers functions? Let's talk with an example like uh, acetic acid. If you have acetic acid and you keep acetic acid in solution, it will tend to dissociate. The proton will be dissociated from acetic acid. It will form acetate ion and H plus ions. So this equilibrium is maintained in solution. And if you keep this equation at pH 4.8, the ratio of protonated acetic acid and acetate ion is equal to 1. It means this, this value 4.8 pH is called pK value of acetic acid, is a dissociation constant of acetic acid. So it means at 4.8 pH, if you keep acetic acid, the equilibrium between this species, protonated and deprotonated, is is established as a result is difficult to change the concentration of these species at equilibrium state for example if you add acid when you say changing pH is basically concentration we understand that is a concentration of H plus ions if you increase H plus ion in solution pH goes down so if you add H plus ion here in this equation it will H plus ion excess H plus ion will associate with acetate ion will form acetic acid Simply, if you, add, if you add acid here, acid will dissociate into acetate ion and H plus ions. So the equilibrium is maintained. So that can be well understood by titration curve. If you have acetic acid and you keep adding some base like KOH, you get this kind of graph. This is titration of acetic acid. Uh, if you measure pH and keep adding um, base here in acetic acid solution, the pH will keep, go keep going up but you get a constant region in between the plateau uh, from here to here. So when you are adding this much KOH, the linearity of the graph is disturbed. You get a constant region. And if you see here, constant region means this plateau is occurring because the pH of the solution is not changing with respect to addition of KH between this range. It means acetic acid is resisting change in pH between this range and this range, this pH range where acetic acid is resisting change is called buffering range or buffering capacity of acetic acid. So basically midpoint of this graph here shows pK value of acetic acid which is equal to 4.8 and this plateau is uh, the, this is called buffering capacity. The, how, how far acetic acid can resist change in pH is called buffering capacity or buffering range. And this buffering range is equal, equal to pK plus minus 1. Because pK for acetic acid is 4.8, it means from 3.8 to 5.8, this plateau is observed. It also means if you keep acetic acid between 3.8 to 5.8 pH value, it will resist change in pH or acetic acid will work as a buffer. Similarly, if you take any base or any other any other any other compound, like if you take phosphate phosphoric acid, the pK value, one of the pK values of phosphoric acid is 6.8. It means phosphoric acid can behave as a buffer near about 6.8 pH value. Similarly, if you go to basic range, there are many basic buffers, for example, Tris HCl is one example, where the pK value is around 8.2 for this base. 
So it means if you want to make a buffer around 8.2 plus minus 1, you need to select the buffer, the twist buffer as your solution. So when you select a buffer, there are a few points you need to remember, like the PK value. For example, if you need a solution of pH 7, you cannot take any compound, any unusable compound. You have to take a compound which is having PK value near to pH 7. Similarly, if you want to make a buffer in acidic range around 5, so you have to select a compound, acidic compound of course, which is having PK value around your desired pH and so on. So this is very important point when you make a buffer, you select a, an appropriate compound which is having PK value near about your desired uh, buffer pH value. Second point is solubility. Your buffer should be well soluble. Uh, sometimes, for example, if you are preparing phosphate buffer and if you are, as per requirement, you are adding divalent or multivalent cations, for example, calcium ion. So if you have calcium ion and phosphate buffer together, it will precipitate, solubility will not be there. So uh, this point also to be remembered, your compound should be well soluble, your mixture of compound in buffer should be well soluble in order to function as a buffer. Then third point is non-toxicity, because you are dealing with biological samples, your buffer should not be toxic to the cell or tissue you are using. Then uh, absorption properties, because you make concentration measurements, for example, your buffer should not absorb in UV or visible region where you are making calculations for concentration and so on. Now for buffer preparation, with the preparation of phosphate buffer. Phosphate buffer is basically a mixture of phosphoric acid and its conjugate salt. So if we look at phosphoric acid, H2PO4- minus is dissociated into HPO4-2 and H plus ion. This is the equilibrium equation for phosphoric acid. So if you want to prepare phosphoric phosphate buffer, you need to take HPO4- minus and HPO4-2 minus in a fixed concentration, in a fixed ratio. So that ratio we need to calculate in order to prepare buffer, phosphate buffer. And uh, this H2PO4, it could be a salt of uh, sodium like NaH2PO4 or even potassium KH2PO4. Similarly, uh, HPO4 minus 2 could be a salt of sodium or potassium as well, Na2HPO4 or K2HPO4. So the pK value for phosphoric acid here is 6.8. It means when you are using phosphoric acid or you are preparing phosphate buffer, you can choose a pH range between 5.8 to 7.8 only. It should be as much as possible close to the pK value, your desired pH value should be. So uh, let's talk about this example. You want to prepare 0.1 molar sodium phosphate buffer, pH 7.1, and the volume is uh, 1 liter, 1000 ml. So these three things you need to define in order to make any buffer. The first is uh, the concentration, how much concentration you are using, ionic strength, here is 0.1 molar. The pH value you want to prepare is 7.1 and how much volume you want to prepare. So these things should be in your mind before you proceed for preparation of a buffer. So the buffer preparations are done as per the Henderson and Hasselbalch equation. So we will not discuss derivation of this equation here, only we need to understand as per the Henderson and Hasselbalch equation, pH is equal to pK plus log of base divided by acid. So here, HPO4 minus 2, this is base, and this here, S2PO4 minus is acid. So now on, I will use B for HPO4 minus 2 and A for S2PO4 minus for simplicity. So just you put the value in the equation, pH is 7.1, which you want to make buffer. So 7.1 is equal to pK of phosphoric acid, which is 6.2 plus log base divided by acid, HPO4 minus 2 and H2PO4 minus. So this ratio we need to calculate. So the same amount in this ratio can be mixed together in order to make the desired buffer. So you solve the equation. Uh, when you have 7.1 is equal to 6.8 plus log B, uh, B concentration of B is a molar concentration B divided by molar concentration of A. So log B by A would be 7.1 minus 6.8 which is equal to 0 0.3 and you can further simplify. So B by A is equal to anti log of 0 0.3 which is equal to 2. So the B by A ratio, the base and acid 
component here should be taken in the ratio of 2 and you, when you mix this ratio together your desired pH will be 7.1 that can be obtained by Henderson and Hasselbach equation so you further simplify so B by A is equal to 2 hence B is equal to 2 of A this is equation number 1 second important thing here you are preparing 0.1 molar sodium phosphate buffer it simply means acid and basic component together in addition should give 0.1 molar ionic strength which again means A plus B should be 0.1 the concentration of A acid and basic base should be 0.1 so that is equation 2 so from these two equations you can calculate value of A and B so B is equal to 2A you can, you can put here instead of B you can write 2A so 3A will, will be equal to 0.1 so, so A is equal to 0.1 divided by 3, which is equal to 0.034. Similarly, B is equal to twice of A concentration. So, B will be 0 0.066 molar. So, if you take A 0 .0, 0 0.034 molar and B, B is basically this component 0 0.066 molar and you mix them together. So it will be a solution of pH 7.1 and 0.1 ionic strength. Okay, so we have seen that whole preparation of this phosphate buffer. Now we need to take acid. Acid is H2PO4 minus 0.034 molar. Molar means is a moles per liter. This is for molarity per liter. Is a molarity. The unit here is molarity. Similarly, B, which is HPO4, you need to take 0.066 molar. So no, you need to convert this molar concentration into uh, amount. And if you are, say, for example, you are preparing phosphate buffer. In case of phosphate buffer, your acid should be NaH2PO4. The molecule weight for NaH2PO4 is 120. And you can multiply this value with this molarity, so you'll get the amount in grams. So you can take 3.96 grams of NaH2PO4. If you are making phosphate buffer, uh, similarly, the molecule weight of KH2PO4 can be considered here. Similarly, in case of uh, base, base will be Na2HPO4, and the molecule weight for Na2HPO4 is 142 delta. So you multiply 142 with the desired molarity to get the amount in gram. It simply means uh, to make this buffer you need to take NaH2PO4 monosodium hydrogen phosphate 3.96 gram and disodium hydrogen phosphate 9.51 gram. So you mix them together and you make volume for 1 liter. So that will be your uh, the desired buffer 0.1 molar sodium phosphate pH 7. Automatically it should get 7.1 pH but if by error if it is little up and down acid, little acid or base can be added in order to adjust the required pH. So this is because the more the, the important point here to remember is these numbers, these numbers you are getting in molarity. These are for 1 liter. For example, if you want to make uh, 500 ml of the same buffer. So this is for 1 liter. The molarity will be half for 500 ml. Or if you want to make both in both the cases for acid and base or you want to make 2 liter of the same buffer, the molarity will be double. So you have to multiply 2 here, 2 times here. And then you calculate the amount in gram. You mix them together. Mixed in, uh, say, if you are preparing for 1 liter buffer, just mix them in, say, 900 ml water. You check uh, a pH using a pH meter. And the buffer, if the pH is varying a little bit up or down, some acid or base can be added to adjust the pH, make the volume up to the desired volume, and that's your buffer.